There's one thing I had drummed into as one of a young lad, was that you're only here for a short time, and if you don't look after nature, it'll come around and bite you in your tail. We're here on Gap to Exchange because we want to learn more about what is happening with gillnet bycatch in the US, but also to, to see what's happening in the UK and try and learn something across those two countries. So it's estimated that about 400,000 seabirds are killed every year in gillnet fisheries, and that's mainly diving species that are affected. So things like common guillemot um, in the southern hemisphere, penguins, um, and then other species like cormorants, shags, uh, and some of the diving duck species. And, um, the work that BirdLife's been doing on gillnet bycatch um, has really just started, we're just beginning, and it's something that's been so under-investigated globally. So we need to try and understand how to reduce bird bycatch. Fishermen are doing things here in the US, and in the UK, fishermen like Rex, and we need to start capitalising on that information they're collecting, the work that they're doing, and, and see if we can expand it globally. We went from a, a monofilament net to a heavy nylon net, which stopped the birds getting caught in it so much, and uh, just kept one little bit of the net for the traps for the fish to get in, so we could monitor where the birds were, and if they did get in trapped in the net, we could get them out quickly and, and release them safely. It all first started the uh, RSPB. We just looked at each other, we weren't talking to each other, we were making it awkward for each other and then slowly we got to trust in each other's bits and pieces. So what's great about GAP2 and this exchange is that it's all about bringing together different stakeholders from different parts and different involvement in fishing. So it's really amazing to be able to come with a fisherman from the UK to spend time here in the States meeting fishermen, meeting the policy makers, meeting some of the scientists as well and, and looking at some of the issues that they've had and talking about common approaches and differences to uh, solving problems and issues. The um Measures we've taken here in Puget Sound to uh, deter uh, bird mortalities in the gillnet fishery are uh, a strip of web which actually scares the birds away from swimming into the net, meaning they can see it. I believe that good science was the basis for us to be able to partner with uh, the industry the government alone could not just say, we want you to reduce bird bycatch and here's how you're going to do it. Uh, the University uh, Washington Sea Grant program was instrumental in collecting the data that allowed us and the industry to come to a collaborative uh, agreement on the best way to address the bird bycatch issues. The Gill letter drifting with, sal with salmon nets, it's very similar to what we do off the Yorkshire coast. Uh, they have a similar problem to us with birds in the gill nets. And this one behind us now has uh, a panel in it about a third of the way down the net to stop the birds getting caught at the top of the net. And hopefully we can adopt some of these practices back in the UK. I think that we've learnt a lot from this trip that uh, the fishermen can work with the people in the environment agencies and get together and improve their in environment and the way they work and the way they fish. One of the highlights has been when we saw a reef fishery that was selecting certain fish that had been bred and released back into the wild and they were actually catching the released fish and letting the wild fish go back unscaled, undamaged, so you've got a natural there, a breeding stock of wild fish coming all the time and you've got a natural breeding stock of farm fish that's coming back all the time. It's been so fantastic to see fishermen from different parts of the world completely talking about how to solve a problem, so that's been absolutely fantastic. It's great to see how things can develop from a potentially very antagonistic situation to one where it's collaborative and people working together. And that's been the real value of this exchange, just seeing the power of a collaborative approach in, uh, in fisheries.